More dynamic, better equipped, and cheaper to run than ever before, Toyota's second-generation British-built Auris family hatchback offers more confident, sleeker styling, improved ride and handling, and more efficient engines, including continued leadership in this segment with hybrid power. It's a big step forward for the brand. We buy cars for all kinds of reasons, some of them sensible, others more personal. While it's the more extreme designs that tend to grab the headlines, there's still a lot to be said for cars that simply work ever so effectively in the real world. Like this one, Toyota's Auris. It's a family hatchback developed from experience that bought us the best-selling car of this kind of all time, Toyota's Corolla. 35 million examples of which were sold in its lifetime before the first generation Auris model took over in 2007. Now, this original Auris, its name derived from the Latin aurum for gold, uh, arrived as a safe and sensible choice that built upon the strengths of its predecessor without really threatening the Golf and Focus fraternity in any particular way. It did, though, have the distinction of introducing hybrid power to this segment back in 2010. But the world's biggest brand needed to do more in a market increasingly demanding more dynamic, appealingly styled, high-tech and efficient products. Facing tough competition, not only from the mainstream makers, but also from up-and-coming Korean budget brands, it needed to bring us a car like this, the second-generation Aris model, introduced here at the very end of 2012. It still leads the way with hybrid power, but this time round, Toyota also promises that the more mainstream choices uh, will be more efficient and, crucially, more desirable too. Are they right? Let's find out. With the first generation Auris, you could pretty much skip over the driving experience section, or at least that was the common belief. In fact, provided that, like most family hatchback buyers, your priority was driving comfort, its driving dynamics were actually quite impressive, until you started to push the thing along a bit, not something you'd really want to do out of choice in that car. But might you be tempted to do so in this one? Well, I had my doubts before getting behind the wheel, but I've actually been quite impressed at what's on offer since I have. Perhaps I shouldn't have been. After all, a company capable of creating the much lauded GT86 Coupe ought also to be capable of making a family hatchback handle with a little vim and vigour, as this one does. I'm not suggesting that it'll go around corners like a hot hatch, but it doesn't take too long a drive to realise that the people who developed this chassis really knew what they were doing. Of course, given that the engineers behind this Mark II Auris had to use a platform and a wheelbase originally developed for a car designed 10 years ago, they couldn't perform miracles and produce a car with the dynamic excellence of class leaders like Volkswagen's Golf or Ford's Focus with their clever but expensively developed modular platforms and multi-link suspension systems. What has happened here, though, is that when it comes to ride and handling, this second generation Auris is a match for, and in many cases better than, just about every other family hatchback in the class. The reasons why are really down to three things. Taking out weight, stiffening the body shell, and lowering the centre of gravity. All are key elements when it comes to improving handling, high-speed stability, and, as it happens, this model's traditionally strong attribute, ride comfort. You see, a lighter car is a more nimble one around the corners, and if it's stiffer and rides lower to the ground, then it'll roll less as well, as is the case here. It also helps that the uh, steering ratio has been made more direct, though I still would have gone a bit further. And uh, the result is a car that can be hustled through a set of bends with some poise. Refinement isn't quite as impressive, unless, of course, you're cruising along in the hybrid model on silent battery power alone, something that's possible in this variant for up to 1.2 miles if you select its EV mode. 
This petrol electric Auris is almost unique in its segment, combining a uh, 1.8 litre VVTi combustion engine with an electric motor to create a combined power output of 134 brake horsepower that's accessible via a six-speed CVT automatic gearbox that's supposed to have been tuned to create a better match between vehicle speed and engine revs, but which still winds uncomfortably when you rev it or try and match Toyota's quoted acceleration figure of rest to 62 miles an hour in 10.9 seconds on the way to a top speed of 112 miles an hour. Better to chill out, throttle back and enjoy the journey, at which point this Auris variant transforms itself into a beautifully laid back, efficient form of family travel. As befits its high-tech status, the hybrid Auris gets the more sophisticated of the two suspension setups offered across the range. The double wishbone arrangement also used on the more conventional 1.6 litre Valvematic petrol model uh, with 130 brake horsepower that I'm driving here. Now, this Valvematic doesn't have the kind of sophisticated three-cylinder or turbocharged uh, engine technology that you'll find with rivals, but it's got a respectable turn of speed that will probably suit most Aris buyers just fine, getting from rest to 62 miles an hour in about 10 and a half seconds on the way to a top speed of 124 miles an hour. Toyota has assumed that the two remaining choices in the lineup, the 89 brake horsepower 1.4 litre D4D diesel and the 98 brake horsepower 1.33 litre VVTi petrol, will care less about ride and handling. Hence the brand's decision to use a simpler torsion beam rear suspension setup for these humbler variants. Volkswagen Golfs use cheaper suspension technology on cheaper models too. Buyers at the lower end of the range don't tend to notice the difference. Though you will notice it if you drive a cheaper Aris alongside a more powerful one over a really poor surface. If you're familiar with the look of the first generation Aris, then you won't be expecting what Toyota has served up with this Mark II model. It's not that the old Aris was a bad looker, it was just a bit anonymous. This time round though, it's as if everything has been sharpened and optimised to create the more extrovert design statement that Toyota calls its keen look. The front features the brand's latest family face with these smeared back headlamps that add a bit of attitude and also visually widen things. It's not all stylist smoke and mirrors either. This car really is lower slung. The overall height reduced by 55 millimeters and the chassis positioned 10 millimeters lower to the ground to give a sportier stance echoed by the more sharply raked windscreen. The belt line is more sharply angled too, uh, aiming to give a sportier wedge shape profile uh, in comparison to the old car's frumpier look and blacked out center and rear pillars also aim to give a sportier feel. Despite an overall length increase of around 30 millimeters, Toyota is proud of the fact that this remains one of the most compact cars in the family hatchback class. Though you might not think this to be a particularly good thing if, like me, you have a family of five to carry about. Fortunately, some very clever design has ensured that you don't notice the compact dimensions. Take the reduced roof height, disguised by the way that the roof gently bulges over the passengers' heads. Now, as usual with this class of car, three will be a bit of a squash here on the back seat, but thanks to 20 millimetres more legroom, two will be quite comfortable. Out back, there's slightly more load space than before. 360 litres, which is more than you get in a Ford Focus a Vauxhall Astra or other segment competitors like Seat's Leon or Peugeot's 308. And it's a figure that applies right across the Auris range now, even to the hybrid model, thanks to the relocation of that car's battery packs under the rear seat. You can more easily access the space available too, thanks to a tailgate opening that's 90 millimeters wider. And once you get your stuff inside, there's a dual level deck board that can be positioned to suit the load you have in mind. 
If you need more space, of course, you can, as usual, push forward the 60-40 split rear backrest. Though, if you're going to be doing that, well, very often, you're probably going to want to consider the Touring Sports Estate variant, which is 285 millimeters longer and features a rear bumper sill positioned 80 millimeters lower for easier loading. Plenty of thought has also gone in up front where the seats have a much wider range of adjustment. Plus there's also uh, um, an increased amount of steering wheel adjustment to make it possible for drivers of all heights to find a comfortable position. Now as for the dash, well I'm a little disappointed that the designers have dispensed with the previous model's dramatic looking centre console which housed the uh, handbrake and gear lever and arched up and away from the floor to form a kind of flying buttress. Uh, instead the focus has been on trying to create something a little more upmarket with various uh, soft touch plastics and brushed metallic finishes. But despite all the effort, it doesn't feel quite as plush as the efforts of uh, rival models. Still, build quality from the British Berniston factory is strong, and the whole layout is certainly ergonomically sound and is a little more interesting than before, with the dash in most variants dominated by this Toyota Touch multimedia system. It's a practical cabin too, with space for four cans and four bottles. You've also got a sliding centre armrest, a sunglasses holder, a coin box, three 12 uh, volt accessory sockets and an AUX external input plug. A cabin, in other words, that you could really live with. Now, recognising that rivals for this car are priced more aggressively than ever, Toyota has sensibly kept Aris asking figures very reasonable indeed. Most models likely to be sold in the 15 to 23,000 pound price bracket. There's a simple body style choice between five door hatch and for a premium of around a thousand pounds, touring sports estate across the various petrol, diesel and hybrid engine choices on offer. Look at the entry level 1.33 VVTi petrol unit and you've got the option of uh, finding an extra £1,300 to graduate up to the more frugal 1.4 litre D4D diesel. Uh, at which point you could also find a further £1,500 to get yourself the Pokia petrol electric hybrid model. In other words, we're talking pricing that'll worry even the Korean budget brands and is way cheaper than the figures being asked by more aspirational mainstream marks. To give you some idea of what I mean, uh, if you're looking at the entry level petrol or diesel versions of this car, then uh, either will save you between two and a half and three and a half thousand pounds on a comparable Honda Civic or Volkswagen Golf. Essentially, you're looking at paying the same for one of these as you would for, say, a high-end i30 or a Kia Seed. As for the mainstream heavy hitters, well, a base petrol-powered stripped-out 1.4-litre Vauxhall Astra or 1.6-litre Ford Focus would save you a little on a comparable 1.33 VVTi petrol Aris. But once you start looking at pokey petrol power, the advantage switches to this Toyota. And diesel drivers, well, they will save big time. If you're looking at uh, this Aris in 1.4 D4D diesel form, then you're probably looking at a list price saving of between 1,500 and 2,000 pounds over a comparable 95 PS 1.3 CDTi Astra or 1.6 TDCi Focus. Now that only leaves the petrol electric Aris hybrid model, which will probably, marginally, be the UK's strongest seller in the range. At the time of this model's launch, there were only two hybrid alternatives in this class. One of them, Honda's Insight, offers 35% less power and inferior fuel and CO2 returns, so it's not really a very credible rival. The other, Toyota's own Prius, doesn't really stack up very well against a hybrid Aris either, with a feebler 98 brake horsepower version of the very same 1.8 litre engine and a list price nearly £2,000 more expensive. 
No, the hybrid Aris really competes more directly against Pokia diesel versions of rival family hatchbacks, which tend to be priced in the 19 to 22,000 pound bracket. Now pitched against these, priced at around 20,000 pounds, an Aris hybrid looks decent value, faster than nearly all of them and unrivaled when it comes to uh, fuel economy and CO2 cleanliness. If, having considered all this, you conclude that it is an Aris of some kind that you actually want, then you'll be pleased to find that whichever five-door hatchback or touring sports estate variant that you choose with whichever mainstream engine, 1.33 litre petrol, 1.6 valve Matic petrol, the one I've got here, um, 1.4 litre D4D diesel or the 1.8 litre petrol electric hybrid, whichever of those you choose, it'll come decently equipped. Though the entry level variant does without the Toyota Touch multimedia system uh, that most buyers will want with its Bluetooth phone connectivity, DAB digital radio and rear view parking camera, that package is fitted to every model further up the range along with alloy wheels. And all models feature daytime running lights, powered heated door mirrors, air conditioning with a pollen filter, a trip computer, a decent quality MP3 compatible CD stereo with USB and AUX connectivity, hill start assist to stop you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions, and nice touches like a front armrest and a leather trim steering wheel with stereo controls. The main option that most will want to consider is to upgrade the Toyota Touch multimedia system to touch and go status, which means it'll include satellite navigation. If you can afford to go further than that, then uh, further options include leather upholstery, uh, a park assist system that'll help you locate spaces and then steer you into them, and a huge sky view panoramic glass roof. Automatic transmission, Toyota's seven-speed multi-drive S CVT gearbox is an option to customers of this 1.6 litre petrol valve Matic model. Safety-wise, all models are very well provided for getting anti-whiplash head restraints, Isofix child seat mountings and seven airbags, including a driver's knee airbag. To try and make sure that you know how to use them, there's an anti-lock braking system with brake assist for emergency stops and a VSC electronic stability control setup. Owning one of these is almost certain to be a pleasantly incident and expense-free experience, something highlighted by overall running costs reductions across this second generation range that amount to around 13%. Now the headlines here are inevitably made by the uh, petrol electric hybrid synergy drive model that's able on 15 inch wheels to record a combined cycle fuel figure of 74.3 miles to the gallon and put out CO2 emissions uh, that can be as low as 87 grams per kilometre and include virtually no NOx or particulate matter. That means a free road tax disc uh, free London congestion charge zone um, entry and further beneficial tax rates for company car users and the businesses that employ them. As an example, the hybrid Aris sits in the lowest company car tax ban for non-electric vehicles, which means that for a 40% taxpayer, that person would be saving around £20 a month in payments to the inland revenue over what they would have paid in a comparably priced diesel Volkswagen Golf. Thanks to Toyota's optimal drive technology though, and a new charging control system that reduces the load on the engine. Even the more ordinary variants might surprise you with their parsonymity. Both the 1.33 litre VVTi petrol models and the 1.4 litre D4D diesels now get a stop and start system that cuts the engine when you don't need it, stuck in traffic or waiting at the lights. But rather pointlessly, you also get an eco counter with the package that tells you how long the engine has been stopped during any given journey. 
Still, thanks to both stop and start and one of the sleekest shapes in the class, running cost returns are hugely improved. The 1.33 VVTi petrol model managing 52.3 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and 125 grams per kilometre of CO2. Returns that can't quite match those of a rival, but far pricier, 85 PS 1.2 litre TSI Volkswagen Golf, but are much better than virtually every other comparable rival in this segment. And you'll really struggle to find a competitor that can match the returns of the 1.4 litre D4D Auris diesel, which manages 74.3 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and puts out 99 grams per kilometre of CO2. The 1.6 litre Valvmatic petrol variant that I'm driving here has rather unfathomably to do without stop and start, which means that it struggles a lot more on the balance sheet, uh, recording a combined cycle fuel figure of 47.9 miles to the gallon and a CO2 return of 138 grams per kilometre. Figures you can actually slightly improve by opting for the uh, seven speed multi drive S CVT automatic gearbox. All models get pretty low insurance ratings, uh, group 7 to 14 on the 1 to 50 scale, helped by the fact that the Auris is unlikely to attract boy racers and that repair costs have been kept to a minimum. Residual values are probably second only to the Volkswagen Golf in this class and there's a peace of mind of a 5 year 100,000 mile warranty. If you're the kind of person that brings uncompromising reason to the purchasing decision when it comes to getting yourself a new family hatchback, then uh, you'll bond with this Auris right away. Optimal drive technology, hybrid power, low maintenance costs, impressive residuals, it'll all be music to your ears. What's changed here though is that in second generation form, this car now offers a lot more than that. You simply don't expect it to be as sharp looking, as accomplished to drive and as value orientated as it now is. With a choice of petrol, diesel or hybrid, hatch or estate, this generation Auris now deserves to shake off its reputation as a family hatchback make weight. There are, it's true, still more dynamic, more versatile and more upmarket feeling choices in this segment, but few are now able to stack up as well as an overall ownership proposition. Finally then, a family hatchback with a Toyota badge that's class competitive in almost every way. It's been a long time coming. <laughs>